Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at AutoCAD 2026. It just released today, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the changes and what's kind of different from AutoCAD 2025. So let's dive right into it. All right, so the first change that has come is something to do with collaboration. So not all of you do collaboration. Uh, some of you do, and this is mostly geared towards people who are in the industry and need to share files with people. So what this does is it allows you so that you can all have like, I guess the same reference point for your drawings. So if you're working on something, uh, you can share a set of connected files. I'm just going to show you how you can access that. Now, I don't have a drawing available to me. I'm not sharing anything. So I'm just going to kind of run through the steps I can and then I'm going to describe the rest of it. So what you want to do is type in options, go to your options, press enter. Once you get to your options here, you're going to want to click files. Once you're in files, you'll see there's going to be another uh, selection up here. If you have your drawing and everything set up properly, that'll say uh, connect. So once you do that, click that, set it up, or it's going to say setup, sorry, click the setup, and then it'll start a dialog box where it's going to have you set everything up so you can set up your templates, your fonts, your styles, everything like that will be linked, set, and current for these drawings that you're going to be able to collaborate on, and it just makes it a lot easier to work on projects like that. The next thing we're going to talk about is the what's changed insight. So I'm just gonna go do a few things, close the program, open it up, and I'm gonna show you what that is. So like I said before, in Activity Insights, you can see changes that have been made to files across collaborators. So what we're gonna to wanna to do to see the changes is you can see I drew something here, just to give you an example. I'm gonna to go to View. In View, I'm gonna to go to Activity Insights. It's right here if you follow my cursor. We're gonna click that. And then we're gonna see we have a variety of things that we've already done with this drawing. So I created the new drawing, I opened it, I saved it, I opened it. Now if you go to Saved, if you click that, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a new section here. So you're gonna see the What's Changed section and you're gonna see no insights are available to me because I'm the only one working on it. But if I had multiple people working on it and let's say uh, my coworker was working on the same drawing and he added an extra line or two lines or he was working on the project for three hours, uh, it's gonna allow me to in this section here see, okay, he worked on this for this long, he did this, this is how big the file has changed. And it's just kind of useful if you're collaborating with groups of people. But if you're working alone, uh, it's not really too useful because as you can see, if you're working on it alone, it doesn't give you anything. Uh, but this is just something that's really useful for people working in industry who are working with other people. So another neat thing that they've added is the new search and convert command. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to take blocks that are identical. So uh, you could take, I guess, office cubicle numbers or, you know, because I've got it sequence of numbers here as well and you can take these numbers and while they're different numbers it'll allow us to identify them with our circle and it will then create a block out of that so i'm going to show you how that works so we're going to come here we're going to select our 10,000 or 1024 sorry and our circle i'm going to come here go to click on the down arrow here click search and convert i'm going to do that and you're going to see it's going to automatically detect everything in that sequence so you see i have 1024 1025 you know the numbers go up all the green that you see is things that it's detected. So we can also see here we have another little toolbar up here that's been added and this allows us to adjust our settings. So you can see we can include existing blocks. So we have that checked, but you can check it off if you don't need that. And we can include text variations. So if I click off of that, it will not include text variations within my circle. So this is the only block that it's detecting. But if I click that on, it's gonna go and detect everything that I have here. And that's just kind of something nice that they've added. And I can go and I can select my different versions here. So I'm searching through two and three, four and five. And that's just kind of like the order that they've detected it in. And then once that's done, if I wanna convert these into blocks, I can click convert and then a new dialogue block our box is going to appear and it's going to say okay we can name our block we can add attribute changes uh or sorry we can define attribute tags and we can you know create base points and everything like that so we'll just call this test block one or sorry test block and then once that's done uh i can also sorry i can go and assign a layer to the block if i have layers and that's done and then i click convert and then i have created a block out of that all right guys so the next thing kind of builds upon the search and convert and in this instance it's detect and convert so this is something that if you've used autocad 2025 you're probably used to but in autocad 2026 the capabilities have been improved now i will say i did test this new and improved system it doesn't work near as well as i still would like it to however it has improved significantly another thing to note is that when you're using detect and convert for blocks it currently works best when it's recognizing architectural objects. So some examples that Autodesk actually includes are single swing doors, double swing doors, toilets, bathtubs, urinals, and generic lighting symbols, and other architectural type 
things. So I would assume that includes sofas and couches uh, and other types of objects like that. So what I've done is I've created a littered mess of a screen to just show you the capabilities of this program. So I've hidden a few very horribly drawn doors in here and I've got about five of them. So we're going to see if and test if this detect and convert is going to be able to detect them through all the noise. It should be able to, but we're just going to do that. So I'm going to come up here to where detect and convert is. If yours is currently saying search and convert, just go click the down arrow here and then click detect and convert. And then you're going to see it's going to start detecting what's on our drawing. So it's going to go search for blocks, whether that's doors, bathtubs, again, or urinals or things like that. So we're just going to wait here, wait for that to be done. And we're assuming that it's going to bring back a set of, there we go. We've got our doors here. So it says we have a set and we have five of them. So it's going to give you the count. So if you know the count already, you can see, okay, the count is correct. You're going to see it's going to be called set one. Uh, I can convert these into blocks. I can edit primary. But if I have multiple different types of blocks in here, this is another thing that's kind of new is if I had, let's say, you know, doors, bathtubs, uh, and sofas in here, I would then have three objects here. So I wouldn't just have the doors, I would have the doors, I'd have my sofas and other objects in here. So if you have like 10 different architectural objects in here, which is what it's really good at detecting, then you're going to have 10 different types in here and you can just go check them, adjust them, turn them into blocks. So if I click this, it's going to go and it's going to do what it did with the search and convert. So what we are doing now is we're just, we're zooming in on our objects, we're getting them highlighted and we're going, okay, this is where they are. This is exactly what I wanted. And we can go again, switch through and see the different types and different objects that there are. We can swap through and then we can also convert. So if we click convert, it's just going to open the dialog box again. And we're going to call this uh, test door, you know, assign the layer or assign a layer to the block. You can also, you know, edit an existing block or whatever. Uh, you can see we have some suggested blocks. So this is something that is you can go through, you know, change it. But we can just go create a new block, click convert. It's going to go convert that all into blocks. Uh, one thing to note is that when you do this, I do believe that it, no, it creates them all into their own separate blocks. So they will all be their own separate blocks. So you don't have to worry about it creating, you know, a single block of all the doors everywhere. You can just go create the single door block and then you have that block. Which brings us to our next point. If you're learning AutoCAD and you're really struggling to grasp it, you're stuck watching these YouTube tutorials, you don't know where to go, you're frustrated, and you just want to figure out how you can actually learn the program. And maybe if you're even interested in certification, get certified then we've got the perfect thing for you. We have our new presentation called AutoCAD Certification Simplified. It's not just about certification, but it's one of the main points where we go over how you can get certified, but also how you can improve your workflow and learn AutoCAD at a professional level. It's only 20 minutes long, it's really quick, and I'm sharing it with you guys right now because it's only limited and you know we're not gonna be running it forever. So go check that out. I have a link for that down in the description and right here and it's perfect for you guys, go check it out. I hope to see you there. So another command that will mostly be applicable to people who are creating parts or other type of machinery uh, is the center mark command. So this has been kind of added, so for ease of access. So if you come here, just type in center mark, press enter. You're gonna see, you're gonna be able to select a circle or arc to add center mark to. So I can go create a circle, I can add a mark to it, and it's gonna go and do that for me, and I can just add that in. Uh, it's become much easier to do. I don't use it, but I thought, you know, it's just something that was added, so I should just cover it. And and it just makes it easier to adjust and change things. And the last part is you can now import revisions from PDF files into AutoCAD instead of just importing them from Autodesk Docs. So you, you used to be able to have to make markups in Autodesk Docs to be able to import them, but now you can do it from PDF files. Again, this is really helpful for people working in the industry, collaborating with people. Uh, I unfortunately don't have an example for you, but uh, I just figured I'd mention it for those of you who are interested in it because you can just go through there, figure it out. Uh, it's not too hard and it's not too difficult from what I've seen. Well, guys, that concludes our video for today. If you haven't already liked and subscribed the video, please do so. And if you haven't, and if you're not a member of our channel, please consider becoming a member. It really helps us get this free content out. There's a few of you who are members. We thank you for your support. It just helps us put time aside so that we can work on these videos and keep giving out the free content for you guys. Again, it's not mandatory, but it really helps us. So if you have five bucks to spare, then please consider sending it our way. And we look forward to helping you guys with all of our free tutorials. And we look forward to your support. And we thank you all for your support. So until next time, take care. We hope this helped you guys kind of make a decision if you want to move up to AutoCAD 2026, if the changes are worth it or not. Let us know in the comments. If it's a great, you know, program that you want to upgrade to, let us know. If it's not, well, just leave a comment and say it's garbage. So guys, we look forward to giving you new videos this new year. 
and take care and we'll see you again.